Spinderella cut it up one time. found out what the theme for today's event was, my thoughts immediately went to a game my friends in high school used to play called Truth or Dare. Are you familiar with the game? Now it's basically a game where players are given the choice between answering a question truthfully or to perform a dare. Normally the questions asked were very embarrassing and the dare would be embarrassing too, if not dangerous. I always managed to escape the game somehow, not so much because I was afraid of owning up to any of the questions, I just didn't like some of the dares that my friends would come up with. You see, some of the dares include kissing another person, and not necessarily from the opposite sex, and I was not too comfortable with that. It was not because I was someone who was pious or prudish, I don't think I was a bore, and heaven forbid, I was not a Miss Goody Two Shoes. I mean, I played tr pranks on my teachers and my friends all the time. I was just not interested in romance or relationships at that age. I was more interested in earning money to buy my rollerblades, so I secretly applied for a job as a waitress and was moonlighting between school and tuition just so I could own my first K2s. On hindsight, I think it was also because my father was extremely strict. He disapproved of us kids doing anything else except to concentrate on our studies, and he was the sort of father who didn't think curriculum was important. Academics was more important. Even my entrepreneur enthusiasm was shot down. Basically, my father was all about studying and no play. I was about 14 or 15 years old then. Now, why am I giving you a sneak into my past? Well, a few years ago, a daughter of a friend contacted me while I was on shoot. She told me she was feeling a bit confused and worried because she had cheated on her boyfriend. She was 14 years old. Now, remember, at her age, I wasn't too interested in boys. Even my peers had imaginary boyfriends, and most of them comprised of boy band members from New Kids on the Block and Boyzone. So I thought, you know, perhaps my friend's daughter, let's just call her City, was going through a phase, a crush. I played along and I emphasized with her. So I asked her, what do you mean you cheated on your boyfriend, girl? And her answer left me speechless. Oh, you know, auntie, I gave another boy, someone that my boyfriend already knows, a blowjob. I didn't know how to react. So I excused myself and I told her I would get back to her as soon as filming was over. I contacted her a few days later asking if she was okay and then I asked if she was practicing safe sex, something I thought her parents should be asking but felt it was my responsibility since she had confided in me. She told me she was still a virgin but will consider birth control just in case. She told me not to tell her strict mother or her father who worked with a religious board, and I've kept my promise till today. I will never know if my decision to keep this information from her mother, my friend, is the best decision. But it did get me thinking about my own two daughters who are very young and extremely precious to me. How would I have reacted had it been my daughter telling me this? Would my daughters even trust me enough to share such intimate matters with me? Do I even want to hear it from them? I spoke to a few people comprising of parents, teachers, counselors, and youths who told me that more and more kids and teenagers are having premarital sex at a younger age. to be from the outside, I am still very conservative when it comes to the delicate topic of sex before marriage. My father, although stern, never addressed it openly. My mother, on the other hand, is a practical person, and being a nurse and lecturer, her only advice to her children was this. You can never go back to just holding hands once you start kissing a boy or a girl to my brother. 
Temptation is strong when you are a teenager as your hormones are vulnerable. So think about what you do because if you get pregnant or if you get any girl pregnant, I am too busy to look after any of your children. I don't want to be a grandmother right now. So it's not exactly an education on sex, but the message was clear enough. I read that 13% of teens have sex before the age of 15. By their 19th birthday, 7 out of 10 teens have already done it. Now, I'm not here to judge, to condemn, or to ridicule. I'm here to say out loud that more and more teenagers and young adults are voluntarily consenting sex before marriage. This is the honest truth, ladies and gentlemen. So what can we, the society, especially parents and caregivers, do about it? Come on. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that make me. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex. This is my, one of my favorite songs, by the way. I thought it was so hip like, when it first came out. I was like, oh, let's talk about sex. Oh, oh, oh. My mother was like, hmm? Moving back to the script. In this day and age, abstinence and trying to make it the ease and accessibility of sex videos, etc., makes all talks and scare tactics irrelevant. Now, I respect my fellow friends who are parents who do try this method. But honestly, unless we take our kids away, take our, their devices, their phones, TV, basically society from home, from them, only then can we be protected from being hurt? Because time and time again, it will fail at the end of the day. So I think the best practice is to be open about it and to educate our kids as soon as they are able to comprehend. We need to develop trust and an open line of communication so our children will be comfortable to discuss and talk about sex openly, as well as to have a platform to ask any questions that they may have, as well as to be given truthful answers. Trying to scare them will only push them away or make them rebel even more, in the case of City. I would much rather have my daughters talk to me about it than to find out through friends, or worse, by their curiosity and, heaven forbid, the consequences of their actions. Then, and only then, I believe, will they start be making informed and smart decisions. Now, the only problem now is us. The adults and care providers, guardians, teachers, the ministers. We need to overcome the uncomfortable situation of speaking to our children about sex. The community needs to know that talking about sex openly is not an invitation to encourage promiscuity. Education explained truthfully and accordingly, in fact, will equip the child with knowledge instead. That's what I feel. I remember attending an event many years ago and the media asked me, so Daphne, how do you bond with your child? And because it was um, a product launch of some baby shampoo or something like that, I decided to tie it in with the event and what I do in reality with my kids. So I told them, when I have extra time with my girls during bathing time, what I will do is I'll take the foam of the sabon or the shampoo or the baby uh, the soap and I'll create foams and I'll put it around their delicate parts, their private areas. And I explain to them, girl, this is your vagina, this is your pepe, this is your bum or your pantat. Sorry, eh? in Sabah, pantat is your batak. So in, in Senanjung, I know if I offend anyone, sorry. But I said, this is your pantat, okay, or your bum bum. These are your breasts. They will grow as you develop when you grow older. And I could see the media, they were squirming, you know, they were feeling very uncomfortable. And I could see my husband, who's also my manager from afar, going, shh. They're not ready for this. He gave me that look. So when will we be ready, ladies and gentlemen? When are our kids ready for sex education? My Mat Saleh friends seem to be more open to their children having sex before marriage, but they educate their children to face the consequences of raising a child at an early age while trying to complete school. Though not the same exact thing, but it was somewhat similar to my mom's blunt and practical approach, and that worked best for me. So that's how it's going to be for my children. So while I'm not too shy to talk about it with my kids, my husband, who's over there, surprisingly is. 
he prefers a more dictator-like approach. So he told my daughters, never mind girl, you just listen to me, okay? I am your papa. You just study hard, you remain a virgin till you are 40, and you become a doctor. I know, right? I had the same expression. Every time he says that to her, I go like, whatever. Now, honestly though, raise your hands. If your father told you that, would you actually still abstain from sex? Right? Can. So anyway, one day, my first her name is Isabel, she's here with me. She said, Mama, what exactly is a virgin? Mira la flor que tienes en tu mano, Jane. My character is very strict Catholic. It's a sin to fall out of place. Ahora, mija, estrujala en tus manos. Really, Mom? Shh. But this is so lame. Mommy, shh. I want to instill in her the values that I couldn't instill so much in my daughter. Not that my daughter is a bad girl, but, you know, she did something that didn't make me very happy. <laughs> Estruja la flor, Jane. Bien. Ahora haz que se vea como nueva otra vez. I'm trying to instill in her the value of virginity because once you lose your virginity, you can never go back and have it again. Nunca olvides eso, Jane. I think that Jane represents something in my life, maybe what I didn't have with my daughter in a way. After Isabel watched this clip, she looks at flowers very differently. She was flabbergasted, okay? She told me that she wants to remain a virgin for life and she's only gonna have hamsters as children. So naturally, I was really, really sad. I mean, as much as I want her to keep her virginity till she gets married, I also want to be a grandmother, okay? So I thought that was a little bit too extreme. So a few weeks later, instead of telling her where babies come from, I started out with, so this is how you were made. And I proceeded to explain as calmly as I and I described scientifically what happens in the pregnancy book. I also explained why premarital sex is not allowed. She is seven. I'd rather her learn these than her friends, and I think it's best to start introducing them to the topic as soon as they're able to comprehend. As their parents, my husband and I will observe and guide them when needed while allowing enough openness between us so they won't be afraid to talk to us. Right now, all I can do is pray to God that my children will make wise choices along the way. And I don't know how things will be, but I must learn to be firm but kind, stern but open to them, to always try to drill respect for their bodies in my talks with them. Starting off with, of course, basic hygiene, to knowing why her private parts are known as her private parts for a reason, and that if anyone touches her in any way that makes her feel uncomfortable, she should not hesitate to tell me or her father, and to say no to the person if, heaven forbid, we are not around. Ladies and gentlemen, I had my... I was alone, and I was away from my parents, and I was also able to rent a small place away from the campus, um, because I worked, or rather, I moonlighted part-time as a cabaret dancer, a cigarette promoter, and I also taught tuition to high school students. So I was still there trying to make a little bit of extra pocket money, but this time around I had started dating and I fell in love. And I finally understood what mum was trying to tell me. Oh, the joy and danger of falling in love. Having been in and out of love in the past, I know there will be challenges and temptation, curiosity as well as peer pressure. I know, because I've been on that boat many, many times. Ultimately, the choice of abstinence is yours, and if you are in a sexual relationship with your partner, then practice safe sex. It is not just about avoiding an unwanted pregnancy, but to prevent the spread of STDs, or sexual transmitted diseases. I tell my children that sex is a beautiful act between two consenting adults in a committed relationship. Key word here, committed. When you tie the knot, you can't be more official than that and with commitment comes responsibility. So even if you aren't in a legal binding commitment and you have sex, you still have the responsibility over yourself, your body, your health, your emotions, because having sex with someone will affect you some way or another. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to highlight though that sex with or without consent is statutory rape if you are below 16 years of age. So bear in mind that if you are below 16 and if you are having sex, 
it is an offence. Now, sex without your consent is rape. In law, rape is limited to the insertion of the penis into your vagina against your will. But I read in the papers yesterday, thank God, that the Court of Appeal wants the definition of rape to be reviewed here in Malaysia in light of the court's decision on May 7th to allow a 60-year-old appeal against a Sessions Court judgment to convict him out of four rape charges against a minor. Now, I'm not sure if you all remember this. There was the case of Bunya Jalong, and if you aren't, let me bring you up to speed. 60-year-old Bunya was accused of raping an underage girl in May, June, July and August back in 2011. She became pregnant. The victim gave birth in February 2012. The DNA report confirmed Bunya to be the biological father of the child. In October 2013, a sessions court in Cebu, Sarawak convicted Bunya of all four charges. He was served 42 years in jail and 14 strokes of the rotan. He was also ordered 40,000 ringgit in compensation. He appealed to the Court of Appeal and he claimed the girl who had asked for sexual intercourse had held his private parts until he ejaculated. He contended that his finger had semen or sperm after he ejaculated and the girl had touched his sperm and they both inserted their fingers into her vagina. The 15-year-old girl had claimed she was raped on four occasions but Bunya contended there was no penile penetration, only penetration with fingers. His appeal has of course caused an uproar. I'm angry. Whatever it is, consent or not, penis or fingers inside, she was underage and she bore his son. It is statutory rape. Why did I decide to talk about premarital sex in today's presentation? I am currently in talks and helping unwed pregnant mothers. Some have given birth and kept their babies and some are still thinking about adoption. I am just glad that they did not dump their babies or hurt them or tried to kill themselves along the way. You'd be surprised that most of them did not know that they could get pregnant on their first night. Some only found out that they were with a child when they were seven months pregnant. One was raped, but she was too ashamed to report it to anyone as she did not wear a hijab. So she thought it was her fault. Very quickly, let me share some facts about rape. A high percentage of rapists are acquaintances, friends or relatives. For every rape case that is reported, nine go unreported. Rape is not prompted by provocative dressing. Many students, women in modest dressing, which includes a headscarf or the hijab or the tudo, and of all ages have been raped. And then there is drug rape. Another issue I would like to highlight. Some of you here are at the age where socializing with friends and exposure to alcohol and drugs is introduced. Again, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to warn you about the danger of drug rape. Drug rape is committed by the rapist by putting a pill into the survivor's drink without her knowledge. The most common drug being used is Rohypnol and works by sedating the victim. Rohypnol is also known as Rufis and it is a very potent tranquilizer that slows one's response, making the survivor dizzy, unusually drowsy, have problems with coordination and appear drunk. The effects of the drug only stays in the body system for a short period of time. So if you suspect you have been victim to drug rape, go to a police or, poli or the hospital as soon as possible and ask to be tested. Don't wait too long. Don't do my mistake. Steering back to premarital sex. I've been told that some girls believe these myths about sex. When you have sex before marriage, it will help you give birth without pain. Mothers who are here, you will know that is not true. Number two, virginity is old fashioned. Everyone is having sex. Again, that's false. Three, sex reduces menstrual pain. Four, you will have larger breasts if you have sex early. And finally, fifth, sex reduces pimples. Now this is the truth, guys. Sex is like electricity. In the right uses, it can give one great pleasure and cements romance.
but if done in the wrong place, wrong time, with the wrong person, it can psychologically be very damaging. Sex before marriage can cause someone to feel guilt, regret, and have that constant fear of getting pregnant. Premarital sex can easily lead to STDs. 50% of people who are currently HIV positive are between the ages of 15 and 24. And finally, of course, there is that risk of having an illegitimate child, and our society is not too kind on this. So if you are in a serious relationship with someone, it's best to stay along with friends, especially if it's at places where you can do it. Avoid being alone, since passion and the heat of the moment can cloud your judgment. Learn to set yourself with limits in your relationship and learn to say no when he or she is going too far. Now remember, a few minutes of pleasure can lead to a lifetime of regret. And if you're already in a sexual relationship, then again, just be responsible and practice safe sex. I know some teens are seeing some older guys. Again, I've been there before. And the mystery of dating someone much older is even more thrilling. Again, be careful because if you do have sex with this guy, it can be statutory rape. I end my talk on this. Say no to temptation and abstain. But if you have made that decision, then take precautionary measures. Thank you.